Hello, Crazy Gamer fans. It's the Crazy Gamer here. I want to welcome you to this very special edition of Crazy Gamers Games. Um, I have talked about in previous videos how I'm building a um, Imperial Knight Castle in and to putting a, incorporating a lot of electronics in it to make it um, light up, move, and you know display the health bar and things like that. But um, I also want to teach teach a process of how you can you know apply these concepts to to any kind of model, large or small, you know, whether it's a Warhammer model or any kind of model or scratch built item. If you want to incorporate electronics in there, I'm starting a series that is going to teach you all the basics of electronics. And you'll be able to put LEDs, you know, sound effects, whatever you want inside your inside your projects or just, you know, make things from around the house. So, um, I've thought about a lot of different ways to go about this. And um, I was, you know, asking around in forums online and whatnot. And um, I got contacted by the author of Make Electronics, Charles Platt. And I don't know if it was him or a company that sells his books. But they make a book called Make Electronics, the second edition. And it basically, it walks you through learning electronics. And the best part about this Make Electronic Second Edition is you can buy kits. You can buy kits like these right here. Like this kit has a bunch of parts in there. And this is um, component pack one. There's a component pack two and three that all have everything you need to go through this book and learn learn about electronics and there's also additional material by this author and this publisher um their encyclopedia of electronic components you know there's power sources and conversions signal processing and sensors so it's a wealth of knowledge in just you know three or four books which is amazing so what i'm going to go through today is I'm going to go through how this series is going to work. Basically, I'm going to go step by step through this book. Um, I'm going to, there's a bunch of experiments, 31 experiments, I believe. The first couple are silly. I probably won't do them. I'll just talk about them. Um, the first one's about licking a 9-volt battery, and I'm not into that. So, But I can tell you the, the gist of it. It's going to tingle, and I wouldn't recommend it. So... We're going to go through this book starting in the next episode, but, you know, I wanted to go over, you know, the book. It's got the experiments in there, and it breaks everything down. It also tells you everything you need for the experiments, you know, in the beginning of each chapter. Also, in the back of the book is a components table of which, what you're going to need and things like that. You know, how many LEDs you're going to need, battery connectors for each chapter. Each chapter is broken down with what com components you need. But if you don't, you know, want to source any individual components, like I was showing you earlier, these component kits are available right here. And I will just take a look in here at this paper. This is component kit one. And you can see here, it has standard LEDs, some blade fuses, some low current LEDs, a double pole, double throw, non latching relay, some resistors, bipolar transistors, trim potentiometer, a push button switch, ceramic capacitors, some multicolored test sleeves with alligator clips, electrolytic capacitors, single pole, double throw switches, shaft potentiometers, and then on the other side, you have some hookup wire, red, black, and yellow. A small loudspeaker, a 9 volt battery connector, and a double A battery. Now, these are from Fro Protect Trader. And when you're looking at these, make sure you get one that goes with the second edition book. Because there's some first edition kits out there that aren't compatible with the second edition book. And I'll be going through the second edition book. But as you can see, like, you know, there's some 22 gauge hookup wire in here. I mean, there's, there's a loudspeaker. And um, this book covers 
covers a lot from basic intro to electronics to you know advanced stuff with microcontrollers. But we got some potentiometers, a wide array of resistors, everything is labeled, and the book goes through in detail how to um, use all these parts and transistors here. So that this is now this is component kit one. It covers experiments eleven through one. And then over here in a similar looking box is component pack two. And we have a, some perfect board, prototyping board, um, battery connectors, some more battery connectors. Um, you got a 555 IC timer. That's very versatile. One of the most common chips out there, IC chips. And then you got some other IC chips. You got a decades counter. You got some more hookup wire. And then you got some AND gates, NAND gates, NOR gates, OR gates, a binary counter, and a three input NOR gate. And all this stuff is explained in the book. And we're going to go through each experiment step by step and also the fundamentals of each thing. And this covers experiments 12 through 24. And you can see on the back there's a whole list of a lot of what was in the last box, some more resistors, some LEDs, um, more NPN transistors. Um, this one has a seven segment LED display, uh, some solder. I don't know if it's lead free solder or not. I wouldn't recommend lead free solder. But we'll get into all that. And then some copper alligator clips, some zener diodes, and some heat shrink tubing. So basically everything you need is in here. Like here's these IC chips. There's your 555 timer right there. You know, just tons of IC chips in here. And if you happen to damage something, there's, it's very easy to get replacements on these. The first edition was wrote with um, an LS series chip, which was harder to find, but now they use a more common chip. But we have some diodes, some Zener diodes, a voltage regulator, um, these displays here that you can have it display numbers or select few letters, some copper alligator clips. I have not gone through all the experiments in the book. I want to do that with you and go through one by one a whole bunch of resistors, more LEDs. Always have fun with LEDs. So this is pack two, this is component pack two, also from um, Protect Trader. And then finally, we have this nice box that's different than the others, but there's a reason for that. This is component pack three. And it comes with some nice stuff. It comes with one of the largest supplies of stranded wire. I think, you know, as an electronics enthusiast, I will ever need. It's insane. And this one actually tells you it's for experiment 31, which is a one radio, no solder, no power thing. So I'm not sure. I haven't looked at that yet. It comes with um, large very large um, neodymium cylinder magnet. It comes with some magnet wrapping wire, some a lot of 22 gauge solid core hookup wire, some rope for whatever that's for. Um, you have a large speaker, and then it also comes with an Adreno microcontroller. And I'll be going into great detail when we come to this section of the Adreno, because that's the microcontroller um, system I'm using for the electronic night and then it comes and then this is nice the actual box that the stuff comes in is for a project it's a speaker enclosure for experiment 29 filtering frequencies so the box they actually send you is going to be used in a product but you get some more cylinder magnets you get a you know crystal ear earphone some more integrated circuits an op amp um, this one's interesting. It's a two-inch paper cone loudspeaker for destruction of a loudspeaker. So, you know, that's that's something. And then there's various resistors and, you know, the stuff you need for the last few experiments in the, um, the book. 
I believe this covers wherever the last one left off, the 31, which is the last experiment in the book. Um, yeah, it covers the final two experiments. So, and it says this doubles as a speaker enclosure for experiment 29. So, now that's the kits. Now they make deluxe versions of these kits that come with the tools you may need. Um, other stuff that you may need from looking through here tools wise, um, a soldering iron. Um, I use the T80 or the T100 um, portable solder irons. These heat up fantastic and I've, I've soldered everything with these. These are the greatest solder irons I've ever used. I've used tons of soldering irons. They're temperature controlled. They're programmable. The tips are, you can change the tips very easily. Um, this one can is run off USB-C and it can be run off a USB-C power bank. This one is um, DC 12 to 24 volts with a 5.5 millimeter jack 2.3 center positive I believe it's a very common common jack and um, you know you can run it off of a you know 12 volt battery pack if you have the right connectors but I, I, I just run it off a wall plug but it, it's fantastic um, you're going to need um, some solder. The kit does come with solder. Um, I recommend lead solder. This is a um, rosin core solder from Kessler. Um, they're one of my sponsors. And I would recommend that this is um, 0.03 inches and this is 0 0.015 inches or 0 0.021. Um, I recommend the, the, for projects like this the larger 0.03. The 0.01 and 0.02 are more for surface mount components. So when I, you, you don't really deal with surface mount in the, this book very much. Also um, a meter. The, like I said the deluxe kits they come with a meter, they come with a soldering iron but um, they offered those. I didn't need another meter. Um, I use these Lumi. Um, these were sent to me. They are fantastic meters. They're actually graphing meters. They have um, built-in basic simple oscilloscopes for testing frequency and then you can see the wave action. You can see pulse width mod modulation. You know, it can, te it can test diodes, capacitors, um, microamps, milliamps, and um, stuff like that. So I have you know, I have that, and then I have a set. The test leads I use are have interchangeable um, tips on them, so I can put alligator clips on them, um, things like that. Different different probe ends. I have a whole little bin here of different tips that can go on the end of these, and you know, it's very versatile. Um, I like to have two meters, one with alligator clips, so I can measure inline current. And then I like to have another one with just the probe leads for measuring voltages, resistances, and things like that, and still also be able to measure um, current. Also, you can, for projects like this, you can get these. These meters are a couple dollars, if that. They're um, unfused, they're very, very cheap, but for simple, simple electronics, they're, they're, they're fine as long as you're not, you know, testing your wall electrical, especially not 240. But if you're just doing small voltages DC and small amperage DC, this little meter right here would work fine. Um, I keep alligator clips on it because I mostly use this for inline current. So it's just, if I break this, it's a couple dollars. If I break one of my other meters, it's a little more costly. So that, that covers meters, tools, um, need a small screwdriver. Um, this is just a MaxCraft. It has interchangeable bits that are stored in the in the top here. So I just use one of those. Hobby knife. I'm sure everybody has a hobby knife. Um, pair of needle nose pliers. 
a very good pair of flush cutters. Um, now these are flush cutters, these are not wire cutters. I do recommend a pair of wire cutters. Um, not 100% necessary, but I recommend a pair of tweezers. Um, that's not necessary. Uh, what is necessary is wire strippers. And uh, this, this type of wire stripper where you put the wire in and you just pull it is just, it's fantastic. Um, it's just, it's, just, it's just fantastic. The old wire strippers where you have to hold it and squeeze just a little bit. This pretty much just strips the end and, you know, it does fling it somewhere, but, you know, you have to clean it up later. So I really recommend those wire strippers. Um, some desoldering braid is good. Um, this is desoldering braid on a little wheel. You know, it just, if you make a mess up on the solder, you can um, desolder it pretty easily. And, um, you know, some flux, like a flux pin um, would be helpful. I use I use um, a little toll of Kessler's um, Tacky Flux. They send me, uh, when I buy solder, they send me a couple tubes of this. It's, it's thick, and you have to be gentle on how much you put down, but it's a very good flux. It's RF741. Um, it gets a little messy. You can use alcohol to clean it up afterwards. You can also get flux in a flux pen. And I do have a flux pen, but where is it? Let's see what else we have here. Right here, flux pen by SRA. So, flux pen, you know, this works great. It has just a little tip on it. Dab it on there, clean it up. You can reheat solder joints and they'll flow together. Um, and things like that. That's um that's basically it for the tools you're gonna need. Um these kits come with come with pretty much everything. And like I said, if you get the if you get the pro, the deluxe kits of these, they come with a meter, they come with a soldering iron, they come with just about everything you need for the books. I didn't need any of that extra stuff, so I just basically had them send me just the components. I mean, I even had most of the components, but now it's all in a quick, you know, a quick spot. I can just grab, you know, I can move to a chapter, like here's Experiment 3, our first circuit. You know, we need a 9-volt battery, some resistors, an LED, some alligator clips, and a meter. So I just go to, you know, Component Kit 1, grab the stuff, grab my meter, and build the circuit. You know, do what it says, build the circuit. You know, learn to identify resistors, you know, learn to ho how to hook up a circuit, and, you know, learn how to check resistors with a meter. You know, we're going to go through all these. You know, some, some episodes, some will be a couple experiments in a video, and some, you know, there'll be a lot of background information that you need to know. I'll try not to make it too boring. Really, this experiment one is having you lick a 9 volt battery and then test it with a meter. I wouldn't recommend that. It does tingle and it's probably not good for you. So, um, other than that, I recommend I recommend this Make Electronics series. Like I said, they have the books on the components. He also has a, another book, Make Electronic, Make More Electronics, which um, I will also cover after I finish covering this. But, you know, basically I just want to give you guys the basic foundations so you can just build some stuff for, you know, some lights, some LEDs, a small controller program for the microcontroller, and things like that. And, you know, you can put some electronics and stuff or, you know, build some fun stuff. Um, my son starts middle school next year and he's taking some um, robotics classes. So I'm also doing this for him so he has you know, the basic electronics down so we can build better robotics and stuff. So that'll be it for this video. I know it's kind of long. Sorry about that, but I wanted just to get in everything. And then in the next video, we can start experimenting and start getting some stuff done. So for Crazy Gamer Games, I'm the Crazy Gamer. Have a great day.